How do you do? And welcome to Rauda's Steelfest overview video. Steelfest 2022 took place a couple of weeks ago. Well, technically speaking, while you're watching this, a few weeks ago, and had four days of underground metal madness of extreme metal kind for people all around the world. Now, technically speaking, we all know that not all the countries are represented by the bands or by the audience, but gotta say, this 10th year anniversary with four days meant that a lot of people for foreign countries, including bands, were there to just create this infamously uh, wonderful and great event with lots of interesting bands and uh, lots of interesting people. Now, people indeed were there from so many countries that I kind of lost count along the way. Uh, I talked to a lot of people who came to say hello or just randomly encountered people from foreign countries to just pick their brains, like, where are you coming from and why are you here and all that stuff. And it was quite interesting to find out that it seems roughly like 40 to 50 percent or so were actually people from foreign countries, not just Finnish metalheads following bands and all that shit. And by shit, I mean the good stuff, obviously. Now, Steelfest has been a, a kind of a controversial festival based on rumors mostly, though, uh, for many, many years. And that is partially because there are bands that are not maybe allowed to or not welcome to certain festivals. But a lot of that thing, apart from those dangerous rumors and all that stuff, is just, you know, kind of a smokescreen kind of a thing. My point here is, you didn't see fights, you didn't see any kind of, uh, how to say, toxic behavior and stuff like that. Even though that was kind of meant to be there because I heard rumors from a friend of a friend of a friend who has once upon a time read an article on Metal Sucks. If you get my point, good. If you're not, well, maybe I'm not the target audience anyway. Now, there were a lot of problems to begin with the uh, Steelfest 2022. I mean, the original lineup which was released for 2020 of course kind of got changed over the years for various reasons of course when you have to postpone because of epidemics and you have to kind of uh, reschedule things a lot of bumps kind of happened a lot of lineup changes became to but i'm not gonna talk about and speculate the various reasons they're in the past now what matters is what was actually going on in the festival now i'm sorry to let you down there is no video material in this particular video where I'm just talking about Steelfest in general, but I'm here just to kind of give you a little bit of a recap, overview, if you will, about what was going on with these roughly 50 bands and four days. Now, days two and three, that is Friday and Saturday, were obviously the main ones with most bands right there. And the list of interesting bands is big and vast. Now, obviously, not every band caters to every possible need. That's kind of a given. And mostly the focus was, once again, on black metal side. And this is something that totally divides people into different boxes or genres or whatever, stereotypes. Some people just want to see certain kind of bands and drink the booze and talk with friends the rest of the night. And that's totally fine. What people don't seem to understand, lots of these kind of events are actually just, you know, meeting friends and like-minded people, making new friends among the old ones and having good times while seeing these great, great bands. Obviously, there are lots of bands you can just skip because nobody has the energy to check out all the bands. Maybe there is one person in a million who actually does that, but given there are 50 bands almost partially overlapping, it means you can just barely run from one place to another between these two, st two stages and then you don't even have time to eat or, you know, take a piss or, you know, enjoy a cup of coffee or, I don't know, ice cream. Not that the weather was actually that good for ice cream. That's point aside. The, the lamest thing what was going on in the festival was actually that this spring has been the coldest in many, many years. I mean, I've been to Steelfest a few times now. And this was the coldest one, which wasn't exactly the kind of a thing you would, you know, um, have ice creams and, you know, t-shirt on, but more like having your long sleeve, maybe even your hoodie on it or whatever kind of a jacket you were wearing, because it was actually pretty cold and chilly at times. Now, there were moments when sun was shining and it was all good, especially in the, the main stage and all that stuff. But now if we take a look at this um, final lineup, and scheduled thing, you can pretty much see that the Sunday was more like, uh, you know, the kind of a get cured by your hangover state. 
Now, there were only a handful of bands compared to the previous days, but I still think it was enough because there was the Sunday Bacchanal, which meant eating good food for three hours and enjoying some softy, which is kind of a barley wine kind of a drink. And that was included in the kind of a different kind of ticket, which I bought just to get some proper nutrition and also drink some sati with my friends and all that stuff. And the special thing people were so much talking about that was, wasn't released before that was Satanic New, Satanic Warmaster's new album played out there. Now, overall, the uh, Thursday act, that's kind of a, like a warm-up day. I mean, if you take a look at this list, it features a lot of interesting bands, but a little bit less crowded than Friday and Saturday. So it was kind of like a warming up day, but still filled with bands. I mean, there's almost 10 bands and quite an interesting amount of names. Now, my problem with all these festivals is because I do interviews, I'm going to miss a lot of bands. I'm also socializing a lot, which means sometimes I just miss bands for that particular reason. And to me, it's totally, I mean, it's okay. Now, there are lots of bands which, I mean, if you start taking a look, look at this list, I was kind of a bound to miss. First of all, like I said, because I'm checking out certain bands and um, and trying to figure out where to do those interviews and when and meeting friends and you know having hellos and taking photos and eating and taking a piss getting a cup of coffee having a drink or all that stuff it's kind of a hard to try to see even half of the band what I try to do so I missed a lot of good bands no denying that and that's kind of a shame but then again I also missed some of the bands which I didn't care too much about so um, in that respect, well, you can't just have it all. It's like collecting all those Pokemons or whatever you kind of a metaphor you want to do. But overall, without going into details, into particular bands and all that stuff, I think it was a blast. And mainly because of good friends and good interviews I did. I'm proud of the interviews I did and um, already being mentioned in the stream previously what I got done. And some of them are not going to be liked by all the people that's given also. But I think they are worth your time, especially if you're in the bands in the first place. The first interview was Azazel on Friday, uh, sorry, Thursday, but it got postponed. So that kind of made me the skip of a few bands here. I mean, I saw partially like Ars Veneficum because of that. I saw the Azazel show, which was kind of hilarious. Uh, but we'll talk more about that with the Azazel interview. And then there are lots of bands which I only see partially, like Commander Agares or Graveland or Sarkrista, etc. Um, but overall, yeah, I think Azazel interview is probably the goofiest, the funniest, and one of the weirdest I've done so far. Some people were saying it's going to be your most popular interview so far because, well, it's Azazel and it's very Lord Satanakian like. If you don't know what Lord Satanakian <laughs> means here, well, you're in for a treat. Let let me say that much. Now, Friday was so much crowded with different bands that it was possible for me to see, like, I don't know, half the bands. Like, White Death was interesting with Crucifixion. That was cool. Borgna had their industrial thing and had a really nice interview with these people. Really nice and smart people. I, I gotta say, that was great. So, partially Gorgon, but missed, like, two first bands. I mean, I saw only glimpses of them. Uh, which also applies, unfortunately, to Belzebub and Akitsa. Missing them, mostly. Uh, Belzebub, I like, saw the last parts, and I was supposed to interview them, but things always don't go as planned. Now, I had an interesting talk with Denial of God, main guy, and that was also, in my opinion, for one of the highlights for, highlights for me, because it was nice to pick his brain and talk about the band and the music and the style, you know, the horror elements and all that stuff. So... For me, personally, these interviews were the highlight moments, even beyond the bands that were on stage. Now, Saturday opened with a couple of Finnish newcomers, Igor Turos and Miss from the Mountains, which I got to see. Really, really cool. They're showing potential, but they didn't get too much crowded because of all that stuff. And then after Corpus Christi, the interviews got to start to happen, and there are lots of things which I missed or only saw a glimpse of. So I can't say like, hey, yeah, I saw a half a gig or full gig, because I didn't. But that it is what it is. Infernal War had to cancel the gig like halfway through. And there was, it seems, health issues because of something. And uh, there was kind of a disappointment for a lot of people. But once again, these are things you can't always affect. Then at some point here in the evening, I think it was around here because I missed a few bands altogether. Because we had a 
like more than one on, on hours talk with Inquisition. And that is, I guess, in so many ways, my most in-depth interview so far. It goes really deep into, I wouldn't say use the word awkward or cringe, I would just say into dark territories. And those who know what I'm talking about know why. And those who don't, well, you could just kind of watch the interview or listen to it partially here and there because it's not your typical thing. But it's interesting, I can pretty much guarantee that a lot of things were left unquestioned, I mean, without questions, were not asked, because after a while, after more than one hour, kind of running in, out of time, and, you know, fans got to prepare for the gig and all that. But I think it's one of my best interviews, hands down, so I'm really, really proud of it. And um, there were a couple of bands which I tried to get for interview, but didn't happen. That was Beelzebub from uh, Brazil and... Um, Blasphemy from Colombia, but a little bit of miscommunication meant that they were not going to happen. So instead of those two, I got to do the Wagner, which I mentioned, and also Ars Beneficum, which last Immortal Prost for Actions dude, the vocalist of the band and the label guy is the same dude. So we got to pick both sides of that table also. I think that was also interesting in my opinion. And then on Sunday, where there was least bands, the funny thing is I tried to get something else on, on Sunday, but I have already uh, interviewed most bands, like Tolkien, Valkyria, Coleman, Condat, Blood Jellies. Didn't want to do Hellboozer Union, so nothing personal. It wasn't just my priority there. And I got the impression that Andy Madre is not even interested. Now, I'm not sure, so we'll see about that later. But they played interesting gigs. Andy Madre was actually really, really nice. Valkyria always just nailing it. And Alpha Hanna was one of my favorite gigs on the gig. That was probably the only one which I actually saw fully which is kind of weird because they're kind of a more rock and roll and punk rock or post-punk and stuff like that and just pure metal. But let, rest assured, great band, in my opinion, so worth it. And Talke, then again, once again, finished it with a great show, which, once again, so only partially. That's kind of a given at this point. Now, four May days may sound like a lot of work and it indeed starts to feel in your guts, in your head, lack of sleep and not too much, you know, proper rest, which means basically here the same thing. And then you're usually having a booze over the days, even though I wasn't like properly drunk any given days, obviously, even though you have a little bit of tipsy throughout four days, well, it kind of starts building up the, the whole level of tiredness and all that stuff. Now I may see more tipsy on those videos when they came out than when I was feeling, but I mean, that it is what it is, rock and roll, man. And if somebody doesn't like it, well, too bad. It's just something that you can change like that. Overall, this was a great, great festival. Like the reasons I mentioned, friends, bands, and interviews. But also because after COVID for two years, it felt so different to just get out of your everyday life, to go to a different city, hang out with good friends at Airbnb. And B. We had sauna for like three days. We we're just having good food, good talks with a lot of guys. I appreciate everybody that came say to hello because, you know, knowing my face because of Rauta, taking photos. Now, I'm not much of a kind of a guy for fame, but of course, of course I would be lying if I didn't say, didn't warm my heart. I mean, it's great that people come to say hello when maybe take some pictures and have a exchange of words because, I mean, I'm as much as a metal fan as the guy next to you or you there. That means I'm nobody and it's cool that somebody wants to take a photo with nobody and uh, talk about music, talk about bands, talk about coming to Finland and how the festivals are and all that stuff. Overall, one of the highlights of the year, I can already say that, even though I have some great uh, things planned ahead. This Steel Fest as well as Infernal Festival, which was like a month before this one, are the highlights for my year 2022. And there are probably some other highlights, hopefully coming up later on. Now, some co couple of anecdotes and um, points about this festival. Even though there were lineup changes, a lot of people were really happy what was going on, even though some of their favorite bands might have been replaced by some other bands. And uh, overall, Steel has first made their uh, you know audience uh, all-time record with like 3,000 people per day on average. I guess that was something I was mentioned told to me and that is good news because it means that this will happen in the future as well. What I was also told it seems four days is just a little bit too much for a lot of people. People cannot really party that hard for four days but two days always seems like you're missing one day 
And I felt that for years, it always seems like a little bit melancholia when you just leave after two days. So it seems quite likely that the next steel fest will be indeed three days, which in my opinion would be the perfect balance. Four days, a little bit too heavy for a lot of people. And you could see that a lot of people were not around for Sunday anymore, even though Tolka and other bands were playing there. But yes, it seems three days will be the uh, perfection, the sweet spot. The sweet spot and... Uh, that would be happening next year before July, but no dates are set. So who knows, maybe it will postpone later in May or maybe it will happen in June. Those dates are not yet discussed, but it was a success. And I think it brought a lot of smiles and people faces. You didn't see fights. You didn't see those kind of a toxic Roman salutes, if you will. You didn't see any kind of a shitty behavior happening, not on a big scale. I told to a few security guys, like asking where their problems and they said like no nothing only a few really drunk people were like taken out because they were like passing out because of booze but that's something that happens on every goddamn festival and some people just can't handle the alcohol so that's there now one last thing which i want to mention is so much related to steel Fest, but steel chaos 2022 which is the fall counterpart of steel fest and that is happening in late october also in the same venue, at the same venue, same city and all that stuff. No artists have been announced yet. And uh, all you need to know basically is the place and the date. So you can start planning if you're coming to Finland or if you are living in Finland, coming to Steel Chaos. It's almost as good. I say almost because obviously the weather is going <laughs> to suck compared to Steel Fest. Even more, it's going to be chillier. It's not going to be warm. But the feeling is still pretty much the same and the bands are always good for Steel Chaos as well. So book this in your calendar if you like Steel Fest. And people who haven't been part of Steel Fest so far, I think there's no reason why not to check out some of those bands. Forget all the rumors from people who have never been there, who have been reading, you know, just... I wouldn't call them news, so I just say them, they're fake news. I know it's a hilarious meme kind of a thing, but the point is, don't trust people who have never been there, because they are just full of crap, I mean, I could say a lot of things about things I have never experienced or seen, and say them as fact, because I, I want to believe in that ways, but I'm not that kind of a guy, I see what I saw, what I experienced, what I hear, and all that stuff, and for me, Steel Fest was as good as ever, there was no problems, there was no shitty moments. All just good fashioned old festival times. That's really what there is to say about it. So check it out and um, check out those interviews. I know a lot of people have been already asking like, when is this going to be out? I mean, he just did it and blah, blah, blah. But we're still running Inferno festival, uh, festival interviews out. So I think the first ones from Steelfest are gonna be out in um, mid, July roughly give or take and those six ones are gonna be if things go as planned one interview coming out every week and they should be running through uh, July and August but that remains to be seen how much work we have and how much time we have dedicated to those interviews and all but now you have it and uh, if you have any questions or comments about the festivals please let me know in the comment section it was fun to meet a lot of you guys see you there next year bye bye